Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you one of our favorites at home which we make be it any season and that's the wheat halwa also known as uh, the ataka halwa also known as ataka shira right so different regions actually call it different names but it's all the same and the process is a little tricky to make if you've never seen someone doing it so in this video i hope i can guide you right and you learn the right way of making this halwa so without wasting any time let's dive right in and learn how to make this dish so now to begin the Atika Halwa, or also known as the Shira, has some basic set of ingredients and that's the whole wheat flour, sugar, which you can also substitute with jaggery, uh, some cashew nuts, ghee, cardamom and uh, that's it. Right? So now I'm going to show you the various stages of um, processes that's going to be made simple for you to make the Atika Shira. So let's proceed. So the first thing is to roast the cashew nuts in a pan. Now to begin now roasting the cashew nuts into a small pan, I'm going to add in some ghee. Just a little bit of ghee. Ghee um, actually adds a lot of flavor to the cashew nuts. So I have some halved cashew nuts here. So I'm going to add it in and roast these cashew nuts until, on medium heat until they're nice and crisp and golden brown. If you turn the heat to high, the cashew nuts might turn brown quickly, but they don't get roasted well. So it's important to roast it on low to medium heat. So this takes about four to five minutes. Once it's done, we'll proceed to the next step. Notice that after three to four minutes of roasting, the cashew nuts have got a nice light golden color and it's actually crisp. And a lot of times um, you might have to turn it off just before it turns, gets that brown color because it will continue to roast in that heat. Okay, small tip to note if you've never roasted cashew nuts before. So I'm going to keep this aside. and. Um, the next step is to make the sugar and uh, sugar water, which is essentially just dissolving the sugar in water and keeping the water warm, which is crucial for making the halwa. So into a saucepan, I'm going to turn on the heat and I'm going to add in the water. This is measured water as per the instructions given below and this is the sugar. Right. I'm going to stir it in and allow the water to come to a brisk boil and also the sugar should dissolve. Once the sugar dissolves, we don't have to make it into any string consistency at all. It ha we just have to make sure the sugar water stays warm. Now that we have added the sugar into the water, make sure that you bring it to a light simmer and dissolve the, the sugar into the water, right? So now that, um, and make sure that you keep stirring so the sugar doesn't st settle down at the bottom of the saucepan. Uh, notice the sugar is dissolved really quickly. At this stage, I'm going to keep this water warm, right? You don't want it to cool down. I'm going to transfer it to the, uh, you know, the stuff top at the back and um, turn the heat to medium high and just keep it simmering there while we actually make the halwa here. Okay, so now let's proceed to make the halwa. Now to make the halwa, we have to roast the, the wheat flour, that is the atta in ghee for really well for about 10 minutes on low to medium heat. So into this pan I'm going to add in the whole wheat flour and uh, then I'm going to add the ghee as well. So they're all equal proportions. If it's a cup of flour, it's a cup of ghee and it's a cup of sugar or a jaggery and, and three cups of water, right? So that's how I have measured it. And now using my ladle I'm going to keep stirring it stirring the wheat flour into the ghee until we until it gets well combined and you will notice that it will get combined well into the ghee and it will form like a, a pudding like a custard notice this it quickly happened right it's just perfect so now at this stage make sure that you turn the heat to medium me, low to medium high and you have to keep roasting the wheat flour until you um, start noticing the wheat flour turning a little darker brown in color and you will notice that it's splitting up and forming slight crumbs and, um, and, and this takes about four to five minutes and I will get to that texture once we arrive there. So until then I'm going to keep roasting it till I arrive at that consistency. Okay, notice that the color of the wheat flour has changed to a nice golden and, and it's become extremely hot. At this stage, I'm going to turn the heat to low and this point is extremely crucial. Uh, what I did was to make sure, ensure that I keep stir, kept stirring it while I was roasting the wheat flour. 
Okay, so now I'm going to add in the cardamom powder that I had freshly pounded. I'm going to add in that. You can also add saffron for flavor, but cardamom powder works well. Okay, at this stage, um, I'm going to be adding, turn off this heat, and I'm going to be adding this water. Uh, be extremely careful because um, it just splashes all over the place when we are actually going to pour the water in into the halwa, to make the halwa. Right? So I'm going to turn the heat to medium and gradually pour the water through one and, and as we pour it, you will notice that uh, the halwa will sort of keep separating itself and um, it will form coarse crumbs and, uh, we, and it will keep thickening at the same time see and it gets a beautiful consistency so we just keep doing that keep pouring the water hence the reason it has to be hot so that all the halwa is this hot as well and the water is hot and then it all sizzles up to form a beautiful texture right fantastic it's perfect I'm gonna keep this to the side and we'll turn the heat a little bit of high and stir it briskly so that the water just gets well incorporated and the halwa doesn't burn at the bottom. When we look into it closely, notice that the halwa has some crumb-like texture when I actually spread it apart. So this is exactly what we want. And it's got a great, nice, rich brown color as well. And we will stir it, keep stirring it for another about three to four minutes, that's it. It's already cooked, so we don't have to cook it further. This is just so that we get the perfect consistency. That's it. So now that the halwa is ready, I've turned off the heat, it looks just perfect. I'm going to plate it and then put the ra roasted cashew nuts on the top. Okay, and that's it and it'll be, be ready for serving. But I'm just going to add in the roasted cashew nuts that were topped with ghee. Fantastic. That's it. The halwa is ready and I can't wait to taste it. I hope you enjoyed watching the recipe of how to make the Atika Halwa, also known as the Shira. Do give this recipe a try in the kitchen and follow the processes and the tips and tricks that I showed you and you will surely get it right. Don't forget to share your feedback in the comments below on how well you got it. And before we go away, lastly, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because you will be getting fresh new recipes delivered into your inbox on all the different things that I do in my kitchen. So until then, until next time, happy cooking and healthy eating.